This is a Cambridge IGCSE Biology Paper 6 alternative to practical talk 3 from June 22. Rice contains starch. Amylase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of starch to form reducing sugars. A student investigated the effect of amylase on cooked rice. The student used this method. Two small beakers were prepared. Each beaker contained 20 grams of cooked white rice. One beaker was lab labeled W, the other one was labeled A. Both beakers were put in a 40 degree water bath. A measuring cylinder was used to add 20 centimeters cubed of distilled water to the rice in beaker W. The same measuring cylinder was then used to add 20 centimeters cubed of 1% amylase solution to beaker A. The beakers were left in the water bath for 10 minutes. One test tube was labeled W10, the second one was labeled A10. After 10 minutes, a glass rod was used to stir the contents of beaker W. A clean pipette was used to remove two centimetres cubed of the liquid surrounding the rice in beaker W. The two centimetres cubed of liquid was put in test tube W10. Steps seven and eight were repeated with beaker A and test tube A10. A syringe was used to add two centimetres cubed of Benedict's solution to each of the test tubes. Test tubes W10 and A10 were put in an 80 degree water bath for five minutes. After five minutes, the colours of the contents of test tubes W10 and A10 were observed. Okay, please don't stress. These bio papers are always like this. They completely overload you with method. But look, the main things to take away from this is that amylase breaks down starch into glucose or reducing sugars, as they've named it here. Now, just remember the colour changes for me. The Benedict's reagent is used to test for reducing sugars so if there are reducing sugars you'd expect to see a brick red orange color if there aren't reducing sugars then you'd expect it to stay blue and so w10 it says it stayed blue which means that there's no reducing sugars why is that because they only added water there was no amylase added Whereas A10 started blue and became orange, which means we do have reducing sugars due to the presence of that amylase breaking down that starch into reducing sugars. Prepare a table to record the results shown in figure 1.1. Doesn't matter which way around you do this table, I'm going to lay it out like this. Colour before. Colour after. So they both started out blue. W10 stayed blue, A10 went to orange. Now we're being asked to state a conclusion for the results shown in figure 1.1. We know that amylase, I've already written this, breaks down the starch in rice to produce reducing sugars. as seen in A10. State two variables that were kept constant. It already told us that they kept the temperature the same. What else do we need to keep the same? Well, anything relating to the rice, so the type of rice, the mass of rice. You could have also talked about the sample size, the volume of Benedict solution used, the time spent in the water bath. State the purpose of adding distilled water to the beaker of cooked rice labelled W. When you're adding this distilled water as opposed to something like amylase, it's because you need a control experiment. It was important that step three was carried out before step four. Predict the effect on the results of step four was carried out before step three. Well, if you reverse these steps, you'd have amylase in beaker W, so then you'd have that starch in the rice in beaker W being broken down into reducing sugars, so you'd see an orange colour there also. So W10 would also turn orange with Benedict's. Make sure you say what you'd see in those results. The temperature of the 40 degree water bath was not maintained and decreased during the investigation. State one piece of equipment that could be used to maintain the temperature at 40 degrees. You want to use a thermostatically controlled water bath. State how you could show that the cooked rice contains starch. So you need 
the reagent iodine because remember iodine turns blue black in the presence of starch Some students investigated the effect of temperature on the rate of amylase activity. They measured the mass of reducing sugars produced in five minutes at different temperatures. The results of this investigation are shown. Describe the effect of temperature on the activity of amylase shown in the graph in figure 1.2 and it's worth two marks. So we can see that as the temperature increases to 35 degrees, we see an increase in the mass of reducing sugars produced. And then above 35 degrees, we see a decrease in the mass produced. So remember 35 degrees is the optimum temperature. And then above 35 degrees C, there is a decrease in enzyme activity as seen by reduction in the reducing sugar mass made. Use the graph to estimate the rate of amylase activity in milligrams per minute at temperature 42 degrees. So measure, use your graph line to read the mass, which is 30 milligrams. But notice that was made in five minutes. They want a rate in terms of per minute, so do 30 divided by five to get an answer of six milligrams per minute. The students wanted to obtain a more accurate value for the temperature at which the amylase works best, suggest further investigative work that the students could carry out. If you want a more accurate value, you just need to carry out more experiments. So test at a smaller interval of temperatures. E.g. 30 degrees Celsius, 33, 34. Plan an investigation to determine the effective pH on the activity of amylase. So we need to specify lots of variables. So we we'll start with our independent variable. So that's what we're changing. The pH used so give a range of pHs e.g. pH 2, 3. Now we need our dependent variables so what are we going to be measuring? Let's use the information in the experiment they gave to us higher up so why not use rice again and look at the mass of reducing sugars produced. because obviously the higher the mass of reducing sugars, the more optimal the pH. What about our control variables? So what sorts of things do we need to keep the same to maintain a fair test where you want the temperature to be the same? Mass of rice. Or you could say starch source. They're really flexible here. Type of rice. Volume of amylase solution. You could also say concentration of amylase solution. Let's repeat at least three times for each pH used. Be nice and precise here and calculate an average. They haven't mentioned anything to do with their own safety arrangements, so why not point out, use safety goggles and take care when using the hot water bath, which you're going to be using to maintain that temperature. Figure 2.1 is a photomicrograph 
of a section through part of a marum grass leaf. Draw a large scale diagram of the section of marum grass leaf shown. Do not draw individual cells. So draw it nice and big. Try and follow the shape. As we know, drawing is not my forte. Make sure to include some of those vascular bundles. Figure 2.2 shows a cross section of the whole marum grass leaf. Measure the length of the line PQ. So we're measuring this line. Make sure it's in millimeters. Use your ruler nice and accurately. It's 112 millimeters. Calculate the actual diameter of the marum grass leaf using the formula and your measurement. So just don't bother rearranging everything. Just put in the information they've given you. So the magnification is 120. The length of the line PQ we've just found. The actual diameter is what we're after. So to find X, do 112 divided by 120. And then they want it to one decimal place, so that's 0 0.9. Scientists investigated the effect of different concentrations of sodium chloride solution on the germination and growth of marron grass. Marron grass seeds were germinated in Petri dishes on filter paper, which had been soaked in one of the different sodium chloride solutions. Each Petri dish contained 15 seeds. The investigation was repeated four times. After 20 days, the lengths of the seedling roots were measured with a ruler. State the variable that was changed. Gosh, they've been nice. The independent variable and the variable that was measured, the dependent variable. So just read back through the wording of the question. Scientists investigated the effect of different concentrations of sodium chloride solution. So that is what they are changing. What are they measuring? Well, they're measuring the length of the roots, they've said. State two ways the scientists designed the investigation to produce valid and reliable results. Reliability is all about repeating. They said that they repeated it four times. And it also says they used a large number of seeds and that will increase the validity. The results of the investigation described in 2B are shown in the table. Using the information in table 2.1, calculate the percentage decrease in the average root length when the concentration of sodium chloride was changed from 4 grams to 6 grams. Give your answer to 3 sig fig and show you're working. So we're using this equation, which is change over original times by 100. So what is that decrease? Well, it's the difference between those two numbers, 6, the original length was 19, multiply that by 100, so that's 31.578, but we want our answer to 3 sig fig, so it's 31.6. Plot a line graph on the grid of the data. So let's start by drawing our y-axis, try and get that a bit closer to that line, x-axis, Remember that your independent variable, so what you change, always goes on the x-axis and what you're measuring, the dependent variable, always goes on the y. I'm just going to steal those labels. And I recommend you do exactly what I'm doing. Just write it out, because by doing that, you'll include the units, which are very important. Perfect. We need to go from 0 to 10. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Average read length needs to go from 1 to 33. I have to rub these out, otherwise it won't let me steal the numbers. Okay, now I can get plotting. Now let's join the points with a straight line. And that's me done.